Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, so now uh, we will talk about uh, why the sequence comparison is important and what are actually the implications of identifying uh, common sites or common genomic regions in a in a sequence analysis. So uh, th this is about one of the most uh, commonly used terminology that is called homologs, right? And homologs are genes or proteins that represent a significant similarity in their sequence and structure, right? You know what the definition of homolog actually the uh, most uh, generalized term is that the genes or sequences which are derived from a common ancestor and how we find that they are from a common ancestor by knowing that the, the sequence of both the genes have some or a lot of similarities so one uh, more important thing uh, uh, we sh you, you students should keep in mind is that there is a difference between uh, having a sequence similarity at protein level and sequence simil similarity at DNA level, right? So, uh, like the, I have just posed a question that what is more significant? A 25% identity of protein sequences, sequence of two protein sequences, or either 70% identity of uh, two DNA sequences, right? What do you think? So, uh, you guys should also uh, discuss this in the discussion uh, discussion part of our class. But uh, if I make it a little more clear is that the answer is not very straightforward that you say that 70% DNA sequence is uh, identity of DNA sequence is more significant than protein sequence identity because that uh, the proteins are generally more conserved than DNA sequence because proteins sequence contain only the coding part and which is important for the structure and function of the gene so the it is very difficult to uh, change or mutate or substitute the protein sequence rather it is more uh, convenient you can say for the nature to change or mutate the dna sequence because a lot of uh, sites in a dna sequence are not functionally relevant as we generally know it for example you know that this there is one uh, dna sequence and that dna sequence has a lot of upstream and translated region then there will be a long intron which is non-coding and then there is an exon which is coding part and then there again there is a long exon intron then exon then exon intron exon and so on right so let's say this is one gene sequence so it's very uh, there are a lot of uh, sites in a dna sequence for example this region if you say uh, you can say this one this side this region this region this region this region which was famously known as the junk part because it does not contain the coding part right so uh, this region are variable sites so if there is any change in this sites this will not actually affect the uh, main structure and function of the gene so that's why if uh, there with time in evolution there are a lot of uh, sequence changes in the in the genome and uh, but when we talk about the protein sequences then protein only contains these sites these sites which are the exonic parts you know that after from dna replication and then there's a transcription and these sites merge together and make a, an rna which is the coding part of the rna and this rna is then converted into a amino acid sequence that is actually the protein and this protein actually contains all the important uh, factory which leads to any specific structure and function so that's why this part of the sequence is very very important and this is totally conserved so when we talk about there is a 20 so now i'm heading towards this uh, to answer this question that when we talk about that there is a 25% identity between a protein sequence then we are saying that there is a percent similarity of 25% in this small region this one this this region and this region of uh, is very important so we can say that even if the, there is a very low identity of 25% we will consider that identity as significant however uh, at DNA level if there is a identity of 25% then we can say that that is not very much significant because uh, 
out of uh, that 25 percent majority of the part will be there's a high possibility that the identity was at this sites between the intronic regions which are not that significant to be known and that can be random however when uh, there is if there is 70 percent identity we can say that this uh, is a significant identity between two dna sequences so they, uh, we will further discuss that in the discussion part and we, uh, we will uh, i'll try to answer the questions so let's see uh, let's see if the proteins that are less than 25 percent identical even if there are sequences which are less than 25 percent identical then what does that mean could that be also called as homologous because homologous genes are derived from a common ancestor and the identity is as less as much less as less than 25 percent so whether these are important or not then for that if we want to answer this identity we have to look for other kinds of evidences for example check if that if they have similar structures there's a uh, there's a chance that uh, we have discussed about the terminology of protein superfamilies and those superfamilies actually means that they have low sequence very low sequence identity but they have relative structures because only the structural part of the or the functional part which is important is conserved and all the rest of the part has mutations or changes so we can say that if uh, the identity of the protein sequence is very less but if we build or predict the structure of those uh, sequences and they uh, we found out some similarities at the structure so we can say that probably they are homologous or if check if they have uh, have similar biological functions again if they have similar roles then we can say that they, they are homologous one more thing uh, we discussed in our blast uh, local alignment search tool that is check if the, uh, the expectation value which tells you how likely it is that the sequence similarity is a result of chance event uh, this is uh, the, actually this expectation value actually uh, as I, we discussed that lower the expectation value there is a high possibility of good alignment so if the according to that algorithm which was uh, which is built in in the, in the blast uh, tool if the e value is less than uh, you can say that near to zero or uh, near to zero or you can say 0.001 or less than 0.001 we can see that there's a high possibility that this is a homologous sequence and uh, again the length of the sequence alignment at least 100 residues this is also very important because uh, it is very uh, difficult to say that if, uh, for example, we have a sequence of uh, one first sequence is of uh, 1,000 amino acid, 10,000 amino acid, let's say, and the other sequence we want to look, for example, query sequence that is of 20 amino acid, right? And out of 20, when we compare these two, 1,000, 10,000 versus 20, and uh, we found that out of these 20 sequences uh, you can say 12 are 12 uh, sequences are showing alignment so this 12 means that if we divide 12 by 20 what we get we get almost you can say almost uh, 12 by uh, 20 and that will be almost near to 60 percent so this is a very high percentage but if we look at the comparison that we are comparing a 10,000 amino acid sequence with a only 20 uh, amino acid sequence, then we can see that the percentage is although at a higher level, but the uh, but you can say that uh, the total number of alignment is only 12. So out of 10,000, only 12 sequences were aligned. So we cannot say that this is a significant alignment. But if we are comparing, for instance, we are comparing um, 1,000 versus uh, 1,000, right? And we, uh, we uh, out of these uh, only, uh, you can say 300 sequences are aligned. Now the percentage is 30%, right? 300 divided by 1,000 is 30%. Now the th percentage is very low compared to this 60%, but the number of sequences which are aligned are 300. So we can say that this alignment is more significant and there is a high possibility that there is a homologous sequence present in these two, uh, in these two sequences rather in, the, in this first comparison. 
and then the uh, pattern of amino acid conservation is also very important for example the last point is that pattern it means that for instance we have a sequence of uh, like for instance there is one sequence and this sequence contains uh, different nucleotides or amino acids i'm just uh, making bar so that and the and the alignment of this sequence is only present for example at here then here then here then here it means that there is no sequence that means that uh, this is uh, this this possibility can be uh, for example there is a and there is a there is a t and there is a t a a c c but the uh, the but these are not present together and that uh, if uh, for example if they are not if they are not present together then we can state that there is a high possibility of chance alignment and these chance uh, alignment are actually just because of the random sequences which are lining together so we can say that this the pattern is not uh, important and we can conclude that this is not a homologous sequence but if these are present together like this a a t t a a c c like this aligned then we can say that there's a pattern even if there are, there are a lot of gaps here but we can say that these this sequence is present together so there is a high possibility that there is one motif present at this site right so uh, this all discussion will help you to understand that uh, the uh, what proteins uh, about what about proteins that are less than 25% identical so we can further dig into these sequences as well and we can answer a lot of interesting questions using sequence or structure so uh, just uh, to uh, conclude this uh, discussion we will just go through the two uh, more slides quickly that there is one more term that is used in this uh, these uh, sequence analysis that is a leg regular expression that is what we uh, build while doing an alignment that if we have multiple sequences then the, uh, we can make one sequence out of all these sequences and we can say that that is the regular expression of this sequence uh, of that conserved site present in these sequences for example here there are one, uh, sequence number 1 that contains 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 uh, nucleotide or amino acid sequence and there is uh, second and third sequences and if we compare we can find there is a conserved site present at this region that is this one right this is totally conserved site and this is semi conserved so we can um, make a regular expression using this that uh, which is a conserved part in these three sequences this is just an example because we have just comparing only three small sequences and we can say that a a a dash T dash H is the conserved part and in brackets we are saying that uh, at this side at the four side there is a possibility that either D would come or I would come but we cannot say with surety because we are only comparing three sequences if we have uh, more sequences then obviously the authenticity of our conclusion will be more clear right so how to make a regular expression this uh, we will just go through the simple basic rules of uh, uh, uh the regular expression that is uh, the regular expression is actually derived from a sequence alignment uh, saved in the database as a regular expression and regular expression is a formal representation of a sequence or motif so one for a, a sequence formal representation is of a, uh, of a pattern or motif is called regular expression so how we do it that uh, for instance rules for uh, writing a regular expression number one represent amino acids using single letter code i will share the slides and we'll discuss it later so that if you have any confusion we can uh, make uh, make it clear during the discussion that point number one represent amino acid using single letter code like in the regular expression in the previous slide you see that uh, a for example dash t dash i this these are one uh, representation using a single letter separate amino acids by hyphens these hyphens right so one is single letter then is separated by hyphens then if a position can contain more than one residue write in square brackets right so this is one other uh, example that uh, if you have seen the previous slide the d or i so if there is a possibility of one residue more than one residue then we'll write in square brackets position that can be marked with any amino acid is denoted by x like if there is no uh, statistical prediction of any 
uh, nucleic acid or amino acid at a site, then we will write at that site as X. For example, at the four sites, there could be X and e amino acid. Alex, and repetitions of the same amino acid as are indicated with parentheses followed by the number of repetitions. For example, if uh, multiple sites contain a same nucleotide or amino acid, uh, sorry, uh, amino acid, we can write it in parentheses. For example, at this site, A and then A and then A, we can write that in parentheses like A into 3. So to, uh, to avoid a long sequence. So I will explain with the example in the next slide. And the last one that amino acid that must be excluded are in curly brackets. So there's a possibility that at, at any site, we can say that there's a high chance that this amino acid will not occur. We will write that as in, in these curly brackets. So let's uh, do an example and then conclude. For example, this is one regular expression. Uh, this is one, two, three, four. You can count the total number of amino acid and that is more, uh, seven. Like one first side, G, S, T, N, E, either one of these, then dash and then G, S, T, Q, R, C, R. These are the uh, one letter code of all the minor acids. Then uh, dash and then F, Y, W, that is the first side, second side, third side, and then I, excluding these three and the rest of the 17 minor acids, then this is the fourth side. Then uh, X into two means that there's a fifth and sixth side, and in the last dash, there's seven side that is PP stands for proline. So this, this is the length of the motor phase of seven amino acids. So uh, if you, uh, I have also written, uh, explained it by one point by point, that first position, there can be either glycine, serine, theronine, asparginine, or glutamate like this one. And the second amino acid, fourth, uh, sorry, fourth position, there can be any amino acid except alanine, asparginine and tryptophan and on the fifth and sixth position there can be any amino acid right because x uh, denotes with any amino acid and uh, and uh, in the, at the last point up uh, side there is a proline that is mentioned by p so the total uh, length is seven so uh,